how to create an effective SLP. Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today, we will be taking a look at how you can set up your own simple and cohesive SLP, which is the standard operating procedure for any business or anything that you might be doing for your business. So let's get into it. Now, the tool that we are using here today is document360.com. And what you're going to do to get started is you're going to go on over to document360.com and you can take a look at the different solutions they have over here. They have other solutions such as customer knowledge base and internal knowledge bases as well. But we're going to continue on to the standard operating procedures over here. So you can see there are multiple different benefits such as the clarity, reducing operational error, errors, meeting legal compliance, changing management, minimizing training time, and the delegation of duties. So once you set up your SOP for your business, it is going to highly improve the work efficiency of your business. Every person will be accountable for the work that they are supposed to be doing. So that is why it is so essential to build your own SOP or standard operating procedure. Now to get started, we're just going to click on free trial on the top left over here, and you're just going to enter your first name, last name, work email, and job title and phone number. So I'm just going to enter all this information and I will get back to you guys in a second. Now, once you have input all of those details, you're going to begin by creating your own knowledge base. So you can click on next over here to set up your own profile then you're going to go on to your basic details so you can add the project name the company name anything that you might want let's say that this is a bow tie company that i want to manage or maybe this is a simple project that i want to manage such as event management so i can add that as the name and then after that you're just going to click on next over here and then you're going to choose your default editor so if you want to upload more text-based documents then you want to have markdown but if you have a lot more imagery video or clips in the documentation or in the SOP that you want to establish, then you will have to go ahead with HTML, but we're going to continue with the markdown. And then you're going to begin by customizing your knowledge base. So you can choose to replace the logo that they create with simple title text. You can also choose the primary color that you want to use to illustrate your business. And you can also select a secondary or a complementary color. So you're just going to pick out any two colors of your choice. Then you're going to click on next over here. And then you're going to choose whether or not this is a private or public knowledge base. So you're just going to select private or public depending on the flexibility or the orientation of your actual SOP method or the employees. So let's say that I only want people who have an account to be able to access the site. Maybe I don't want the operating procedure of my business to be leaked to everyone. So I can choose to make it mixed or I can choose to make it a mixed platform where some of the content, some of the standard procedures that I apply could be seen by the random public and some of those could be privated. But I'm going to make this a private one. And just like that, our knowledge base is being set up for us to establish our own standard operating procedure for our business. Now, just in a few steps, you will be able Able to create your own simple knowledge base. So you can see over here on your left side, you have documentation, you have drive, you have analytics, and you have content tools. Now to get started, let's say you go into documentation. Now documentation is one of the most important features whenever you are going to build your sample, whenever you're going to build your portfolio. So I'm going to clear all the sample data over here and I will show you guys exactly how you're going to set up. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go into to your documentation and then you can click on new category in your home page builder or in your workflow builder now what you're going to do is you can see you have multiple different categories over here you have documentation category manager and editor so to get started what we're going to do is we're going to click on new category and we're just going to create a new folder maybe this could be customer complaint resolutions so we're going to create this folder over here and once you have created this folder you can click on add and you can add multiple articles import any of the previous articles that you have or click on add category to add different kinds of categories. So let's say whenever we receive a customer complaint, I want a standard operating procedure. So I want my employees to be re responding in a very standard way that I have preset for them. So for that, I would just create this simple customer complaint section. Then I would go ahead and create a add category. I would add multiple folders such as quality complaints. Then I can go ahead and within the quality complaints, I can click on add and then I would click on add article and I can create a new article article or I can even go ahead and search from a template that I could previously, you know, you could set a prerequisite template that you can apply to most and then you're going to enter your article name. 
So let's say if the customer has a customer complaint about quality complaints and specifically about a low quality item, you can create that article over here and you can begin writing. So you have all of the basic features of any kind of Word document. You have multiple different heading options, back codes, and different warnings, lines, or errors that you can add as well as find and replace features and video features as well. So you can add multiple different things. And once you have added that, you're just going to click on publish and you're going to click on yes over here. And then you will have the article written over here. Now, what is the benefit of this? How is this actually going to be helpful? And this is going to give your employees or this is going to give your business a standardized version of response. Let's say whenever you go to a grocery store, you expect the checklist to be in a standard format. That is how your business should operate. Everything needs to be in a standardized format. And the format that you are going to be using is going to be provided to you by Document 360. Now, after that, the documentation section is where you're going to go ahead and upload all of your different categories and articles. You can also embed items into articles. So you can see that if you go into your drive section over here, and this is going to be the section where we are going to upload all of our content and all of our SOPs or any kind of business setup that you want, you can upload it over here, whatever your processing maps are, how standardized operating procedures are going to work, any kind of document can be uploaded in your drive section. You can see I have uh, a couple of documents uploaded in the Word document section. And what you can do is that you can actually take this article, you can click on the article or your file, whatever you have uploaded, and then you can just copy this file from here and you can add certain tags to this as well. So uh, let's say we have certain articles on simply on how to um, how to file a complaint or how to uh, fix a item or how to deal with a broken item. So all of those articles, you can add a specific tag to them and then you can add certain dependencies, but we're going to skip that for now. And then you can just copy this link over here and then you can go into your documentation section and then go ahead and in your document, let's say that we have low quality item and then you can see this is an article and you can click on edit. And then what you can do is you can go on ahead and go on and add your inter add your file. So you can click on insert file over here. And now you can see these are the files that we have uploaded in our drive section. You saw the one that I had and you can just select that and click on insert over here. And just like that, my drive item has been inserted into my article. So now I can click on publish, click on yes. And now you can see the item has been published. Now, if I go on to my documentation or into my actual website page, you can see over here that the template or the item has been uploaded onto the actual article. And that is how simply you can upload items into the drive section and have them embedded into your actual content articles for your customer facing portal. Now, now, if you take a look at your analytics, you can see I just visited from my own PC and you can see you have your application as well. You can see these stats from the past seven days, 90 days, 100 days, and this is going to be performance based. This could be geography based. So you can take a look at the overall performance of your articles as well. And you can also see the likes, dislikes, reads and average time spent as well as you can monitor team accounts. So you have the total contributors, readers, and total articles published. So this will also allow you to have a better monitoring service for your overall portal. Now, if we take a look at the document templates, and let's say that you want to import some operating procedures. So you can go into your actual uh, set, uh, documentation, documentation section on the bottom left over here. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on your content tools and on your content tools, you have your import and export tools. And what you're going to do is first off, you can actually import articles from any other uh, platform. You can have import, uh, you can import your articles from docs. You can upload your document as a docs on Google docs, Confluence, or your Dropbox paper. So what you can do is you're going to click on Word over here and then we're just going to select our item and now you can choose how you want to split this. So I want to do this as a single article and then you can uh, change the article title.
And now over here, we're just going to add the article title. And now you're just going to click on next. You're going to choose the drive folder. And I just want this to be present within the Word documents. And now I'm going to click on next. Now you can see all of this is the summary. Now the source is Word. I have the single article. This is going to be uploaded in my drive folder. This is going to be the article title. And this is the file that I'm using for my article. This will actually enable you to upload any of your previous content onto the Document 360 platform. So you can see over here, just like that, this is showing me how it is going to be added into my, uh, into my actual Document 360 platform. And now I can choose to edit this and then I can click on publish click on yes over here and now you can see this new article has also been uploaded so this is going to enable you to actually uh, go on ahead and make a larger content like have all of your uh, all of your prerequisites or pre-existing articles be imported in a very standardized procedure in the content tools you can click on new template and set up a simple template for text-based articles that you might want to be writing so this will enable you to write a simple article without having to you know uh, type in all the basics all of the basic data that you might be inputting in every article is going to be simplified with this method after that you also have bulk operations so bulk editing is super essential when you're going to be managing a larger scale business over here so for that you're going to be using bulk operations where you can add remove so let's say an article gets outdated and you no longer want to respond to complaints about low quality items in this way then you're just going to click on revision you can add revisions as well as remove outdated data you can hide certain data you can also have a reviews added or a new version published of an article then you also have article review reminders, tags, and workflow designers. So the workflow designer is going to basically allow you to vet all of the content that there is. So you can create a new status and you can add potential statuses such as published, in review, or for example, uploaded, in review, and then published or waiting for approval from a manager or something along those lines. Now, you also have the content reuse where you're able to add snippets of certain articles into other articles and add a certain variable from a previous document onto the new one. You can also do exporting articles as well. So you can export some of your articles and uh, have them in a shamel format for you to upload on your own website or on any other uh, platform that you might be using. You also have export to PDF options where you can click on new content template and you can go on ahead and make this into a PDF template for you to be able to give easy access to other people or for other people to be able to access your content easily. Now, if we click on view site on the top right Right over here you can see this is what our platform is currently looking like now going on ahead let's customize this further you can go on ahead and go into your home page builder over here and now you can see this is what our home page builder currently looks like now we're going to change this up and we're going to make this uh, for a specific business now you can go on ahead and add your documentation links. You can add custom URLs. You can select your, bu your button colors as well. And you can also choose to change your header background. So let's say I want a different color, then I can choose a different color from the color gradient over here. So I'm just gonna go with this color over here. And now you can see you're gonna have to add your articles and as well as blocks. So you can add text blocks, text columns, HTML, text and image, knowledge base categories and widgets as as well so going on ahead you can see you have your basic block and uh, you this is going to be our header and I'm going to close the header and then you have your body block so in <clears throat> So in your body blocks, you have your basic content. And what you're going to do is I'm just going to remove these pre-existing columns over here. And you can click on over here and add the section titles. So this could be um, this could be uh, this could be first off, it could be FAQs over here. And then you can add your second title, and then you're going to change the emoticon for this. like so and then you're going to add your next title and you can just change your icon
like so. So you can add all of your column text over here. And below that, you're going to have your knowledge base category. So you can see I have whatever articles you have posted in your documentation section. You can begin listing them over here. So we have customer complaints, quality complaints. And now we're just going to click on publish over here. And now I can click on view site over here and you can see this is what it's currently looking like and you have your basic uh, basic information then you have your browser your category section and you also have quick links that you can add at the bottom as well. Now if I go on ahead into my web page builder go into documentation and if I go on ahead and build some more uh, build some more article sections so I can click on new add new category. And now you can see I've added multiple different categories into my actual database and now I can begin adding relevant articles into this database and I can go on ahead and customize my landing page so I can go on ahead and go into my home page builder and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more links so I'm going to select more categories to display over here and then I can change the emoticon to fit the overall uh, section so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the icon colors as well well as the icons so we're just going to change the icons from here and we're just going to do this like so so just like that you can change all of your colors and all of your icons and then you're going to click on publish and now if we view our site over here this is what it's currently looking like we have our basic section and we're just going to refresh this publish this as it is we're going to go back into our documentation section and now you can see if you're in your category section we have our different uh we have our different uh, articles present within and just like that you have internal affairs you have your how to file an employee complaint whatever articles you have posted in the document 360 platform in terms of pricing well you can also get this for free document 360 is available for free where you can create up to five team accounts and then on the startup version it starts at 99 dollars per project per Per month where you also have custom branding seo description generators tag management and article templates and then they also have the 249 dollar version where you also have things like api access smart bars integrations and extensions imports and recycle bins as well and then you have the enterprise version which starts at 499 dollars per project per month with all of the previous features as well as security groups roles enterprise sso localization and so much more so i hope you found this this video helpful and you are now better able to understand how to use document 360 and how to use the different functionalities such as their documentation drive analytics and content tools make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the youtube channel and if you have any questions or queries leave them in the comment box down below and i will catch you guys in the next video